Yeah. My third one, and he pulled up on me, called my name type shit. That's how you know I'm really, I'm putting Kensington on the map. How much are you using daily? How much am I using daily? Yeah. <laughs> A lot. It don't really matter how much. Just, just know, just know it's more than I ever wanted to use in my life. Do you think this is a government experiment? <laughs> oh man, I, hey, I'm a real conspiracy theorist. For real, don't, don't, don't get that whole little situation started. Do I think this is? Yeah, what do um, you think this is? Kensington. Everybody oh, using drugs out here. What you think this is? You can't do this anywhere else. Open air drug market. I think this is a trap. Trap. If you ask me, I thought you just started hitting. It's like a concentration camp. Say that one more time. It's like a concentration camp. Concentration camp out here. They get you fucking hooked and trapped out here. It's lawless, and they don't never give a fuck what happens to you. As long as you're here, you're here. Look at that shit right out there. <laughs> That's like some old school movie type shit, like some outsider greaser shit. Yeah, you know whose shoes those are? That's like Mike. Like Mike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's my basketball kicks. Crazy. Nah, crazy. but um, I found myself involving and indulging in other people's problems way more than I need to because it allows me to forget about my own and it allows me to not focus. I help people with their problems and then don't even know how to figure out or help myself with my own problems. So it's like, I don't know, it's weird. You know? So you're going to choose this lifestyle and choose the drugs over your kids? How long are you going to do that for? You want me to be completely honest or you want me to lie to you? I'm just, uh, I'm just curious. How, how long are you going to let this, this go on for? The drugs can't be that. It can't be that special. Ain't nothing special about them drugs that you'll choose them over your kids. Nothing. You brought them into this world. You're selfish to leave them, leave them without a dad. You're absolutely right. You're 100% right, bro. But you know, you know, you know what's crazy? You know what's not selfish? Hey, Scooby. It's nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you too, buddy. I'm um, so sorry about that. You're speaking with ATM Fox. Welcome to the channel. Right. I'm here to give a voice to the voiceless. Let's speak then. Let's talk that shit. Where are you from, Scooby? Uh, originally Chesapeake, Virginia. But at 17, I went cross country. Been in 36 states, following festivals, trying to like, you know, learn life and figure out what I was missing out on or if I was missing out on anything in, in general. But I ended up in PA in 2015, ended up having a daughter and mm -hmm. decided to, you know, kick it for a little while. All right, how old are you? How old? Yeah. 27. All right, got a daughter? My oldest is seven, about to be eight, and my youngest is six. Okay, that's what's two up, daughters. Man. Two baby girls. Huh? Two baby girls, they both girls, right? Yeah, both girls, same mom. Um... Okay, what's the relationship like? Um. If I can, if I'm being honest, there is no relationship at all. Like, as much as I would want one to be, and as much as I wish that there was, you know, and I'm, as much as I like sometimes, like, get lost in my thoughts, like, thinking what would life be with, with them, there's no relationship at all. Like, uh, I ended up relapsing after three years of sobriety and 
I noticed that keeping them around would bring them down more than letting them go. So I pushed, I pushed my daughters and my baby mom away just so, just so I don't end up bringing them to hell with me, you know? Sometimes you gotta make sacrifices for your loved ones, even if it means that you gonna, you gonna, huh, you gonna be living in torment yourself. But. Three years of sobriety, man. That sounds good. It was good. And it sounds like you can do it again. Huh. We gonna see. You gotta build that confidence up. I mean, goddamn. You confident? You think you gonna be back on that path at all? You know, it's crazy, right? Uh -oh. Hold up. A little cigarette pass, touchdown play. But no, nah, <laughs> but no, nah, um, to be honest, bro, I don't ever make expectations. Like, like, uh, all right, a little insight or a little fun fact about me. I crash out a lot. I tend to fucking just do fucking dumb shit and end up fucking up. I ain't know that's the L. The L is called the L because it's an L shape. That shit is called the L because it's an elevated mm -hmm. uh, transportation system. Mm -hmm. But no, nah, um, fun fact, I tend to crash out a lot and I tend to make a lot of mistakes and I tend to suffer consequences for my mistakes every time. And it's like, I go to jail. And then ain't no three days, no week. I go to jail for like, you know, I might do a six month bit, but during that time, a lot of people, like, all right, when I first started going to jail, my first, let, let's say two times, uh, I made all these expectations and, and like, I made all these plans and like set all these like standards of what I'm going to do. I made, I made a whole, I mapped it all out. I had it all mapped the fuck out. Oh, I'm going to get sober. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to get All right. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But you know what, in, in reality, I never I never end up doing those things. Even though as much as I want to do those things, it's like, I never end up doing them. And that's why I don't make expectations. Like, because when I make those expectations or I make those, or I set those standards, as soon as I don't, motherfucking, as soon as I don't, meet those expectations, I automatically get, I automatically fall into this depressive state. I fall into like a deep dark, like, like, cause I, cause I, cause I get upset with myself. Or I think of myself as a failure or I tell myself, oh, you, 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 you couldn't do this. So you can't do that. If you can't, I, I tell myself, Say if I say I'm going to get a job and I'm going to then get a car. Well, if I don't get in, no, say I'm going to get sober, get a job, get a car. If I get out and relapse the first day, I cancel out the other two expectations because I tell myself in my head that I can't accomplish those if I didn't do the first one, which is not true. But some people are in mindsets wired different. So... Regarding the sobriety jump, well, what's it like surviving out here? Honestly, for me, it's a different. It's it's, it's not hard, you know, because I've been in places like this before. I, I I strive through chaos, so it's not hard for me to survive. But you go and ask around, you're gonna get a hundred different answers, bro. And I see people having a really hard time surviving like because you gotta think bro we're all addicts we're all trying to get a couple dollars to chase that bag or get a couple dollars and get what we need to get through our day but it's like what you do to get those dollars or what you have to do to get what you need to get through the day this shit is like in reality, it's dangerous, and, and you're risking your life, and you're risking your freedom every day living out Like, for me? What's the craziest thing you've seen out here, Scooby? <laughs> I mean, 
the craziest thing I seen recently. And to be honest, I ain't even really see it. I just heard, I just like caught the aftermath. Somebody just died two days ago. Somebody just got stabbed for no reason two days ago. But the funniest thing I seen. How did they die? I'm sorry. They got stabbed. They got stabbed by somebody else? Somebody did something. Did anybody get caught for that? Huh? Did anybody get caught for that? No, I don't know. No. I, I don't even. That was just did, a little. That was just a little. To the show person, you how dangerous this could be, but we did, we gonna we gonna change that topic. Did they make it out though? Hell no, that nigga is gone. I'm just saying, did the person make it make it out alive? Did he survive? He is finito. So he's gone. He wow. went to go see Jesus, and it's sad to say, and it's really sad to say, but it's like when you put yourself in this lifestyle. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what type of people are around you. You never know what mindsets are surrounding you. Some people might just have a bad day. Some people might be whipped y'all and mad that you got a fucking shot of the drug that they didn't want. And it just might snap. And that could be your last breath right there. So it's like, for everybody thinking this junk cool, bro, this shit is not cool, bro. This shit is horrible. It's literally my hell. I don't know about everybody else. It might be heaven to people, but this shit is hell to me. Nightmare. It ain't a nightmare. I ain't gonna see it as a nightmare because you wanna know the reason why it's my hell? Why? It's because I can't see an ending. See, I can't see a positive outcome to being out here. I can't see it. It's like you're in purgatory. It's like your life is on repeat every single day, and that's hell. Chasing that high every day. Waking up, trying to figure out how you're going to get a couple dollars to get high every day. And if you don't get that couple dollars, nigga, you're going to feel torment. That's hell, bro. That's hell. Like, literally, physically hell. And it's like, the reason why I call it my hell is because I genuinely find amusement in it. And mentally, it might be crazy, but it's like. You just saying that because uh, the circumstance, you can't, you, you don't feel like you can get out of it. You know, uh, I'm you say it's amusement, but this is this isn't really amusing. When you I think mean, about it, it's not. It can't be amusing. It got to be amusing. Literally. And I'm speaking to you personally. It has to be amusing because we can we everybody knows the steps to get out of this. It's not hard. It's not hard to leave this lifestyle behind, but we continuously stay and live it every day. So it's like, it gotta be amusing. We might say, yeah, we hate this life, we hate this. What the fuck we don't? If you hated this life, you would change your life. It's like, you hate aspects of it. You hate waking up withdrawing, or you hate not having enough money to get the amount of drugs that you want for the day, or you hate sharing your drugs. You hate people asking for shit. But genuinely, it's like, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. You can't not love it. But I mean, and it's like, to society, in society's eyes, and people who live a sober life, this shit is wild, crazy, disgusting, and <clears throat> fuck 12. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get this. Okay. Look, they've been bullying us for a little uh, for lately. They actually doing their job lately, man. That shit is weird as hell. That's the first time. That's the Say first that again, shit. I'm sorry. I said that this is going to be the first video ever put out about Kensington that you see a cop addressing somebody. 50 50 chance of arresting somebody ever in the world. Mm hmm. It's a woman cop. Yo, Dom. It's a big woman. Uh, uh, um, but yeah, he got it. You ever see yourself being a father to your daughters again?
That's something I don't free. That's something I push to the back of my mind. Because as of right now, I'm not. I'm not. As of right now, I am not equipped, nor am I. I would be. I'd be damned if I allow my daughter to see me in this type of life, you know? Because it's like, one, two things I take pride in. I take pride in how I dress and how I present myself and how I conduct myself. Like, I take pride in how I look. Maybe it's conceited, maybe it's nar- narcissistic, whatever. That's one thing I take pride in. The second is I take pride in, like, being who I am and being a good friend and taking care of my folks. That, that's, that's something I've always done, but it's like, I'm taking care of my folks, but it's like, I'm not really taking care of my real folks. I'm out here taking, bro, I take care of everybody else except my responsibilities. And you know what? I became very self-aware, you know, in the last five years of my life. And it's like, I realized, Nah, but I realized, right, Come, becoming self-aware that I try my hardest and I find myself indulging and involving yeah, myself. Right up there. <laughs> That's like some old school movie type shit, like some outsider greaser shit. Yeah, you know whose shoes those are? That's like Mike. Like Mike? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's my basketball kicks. Crazy. Nah, crazy. but um, I found myself involving and indulging in other people's problems way more than I need to because it allows me to forget about my own and it allows me to not focus. I help people with their problems and then don't even know how to figure out or help myself with my own problems. So it's like, I don't know, it's weird, you know? So you gonna choose this lifestyle and choose the drugs over your kids? How long you gonna do that for? You want me to be completely honest or you want me to lie to you? I'm just, uh, I'm just curious. How, how long you gonna let this this go on for? The drugs can't be that. It can't be that special. Ain't nothing special about them drugs that you'll choose them over your kids. Nothing. You brought them into this world. You're selfish to leave them, leave them without a dad. You're absolutely right. You're 100 percent right, bro. But you know, you know, you know, it's crazy. You know, it's not selfish. I'm selfish for that, yes. But the fact that I was able to realize and understand and acknowledge that me staying in their life after while going through this whole relapse process, yes. I was three three years sober, yes. I could have addressed the issue and handled it more appropriately, but I never knew how, you know? I never knew how to address and handle the situation appropriately, uh, appropriately grow up and man up and face my problems, you know? And, and it takes, and it, and it sucks that it took this long, but it's like, you know, it wasn't selfish. Allowing my family and my kids to fucking go through hell and go through me going to jail and me doing drugs and me spending all the money. It, I, I, it, it wasn't selfish for me to realize that they needed to be pushed away for them to be safe and but, comfortable. But Scooby, you did it before. You got clean before. I did. You was, you was a father to your kids, I'm assuming, right? You was, you was in there in their sense. life, right? During that sober time? You did it before. Yeah. So you're, you're reflecting on the past right now. Why, why not make a better future for yourself? As I said, I don't make expectations. So me telling you that I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this, and me not achieving it is going to hurt me way more than me actually achieving it. Like, it's like, if I do it, then I do it. If I don't, then I don't. And it sounds heartless, but it's like, in reality, 
I haven't seen my oldest since she was six months. I haven't seen my youngest since she, since she was four months. My oldest was taken from me and my baby mom for personal reasons, not not in regarding or even involving me and my baby mom. It was petty. It was it was. If you ask me, is illegal. My youngest, I pushed her and my baby mom away to to basically. You ever you ever feel like. All right, you ever grew up, and this is for people who, who had kids taken away by CYS and then had more kids after that. If you ever done that, I have a hard time with coping with the fact that I did everything for my second daughter. Got an apartment, cars. I had everything I wanted, bro. I literally did. That I have proof to prove it. But it's like, the fact that there was always a missing piece and was always going to be a missing piece, I could never cope with that. Happy family events without a main component of the family, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, yeah, I've done it before. Yeah, I can do it again. But it's like, will I? I don't know. Do I want to? Scooby, you know all you promise is death if you keep using these drugs. All right, you know. You know that, right? I'm pretty sure, sure you've seen people check. What? Hundreds. Hold up, bro. What's that, dog? Huh? Bro, fuck that old head. Yeah, I'm going to holler at you after this, though. You hear me? Yeah. My third one. He pulled up on me. Call my name type shit. That's how you know I'm really. I'm putting Kensington on the map. How much are you using daily? How much am I using daily? Yeah. <laughs> A lot. It don't really matter how much. Just, just know. Just know. It's more than I ever wanted to use in my life. Where do you see yourself in the next six months? Huh? Where do you see yourself in the next six months? I don't know. I do not know. Uh, I ain't even going to touch bases on that because I don't know. It's like, I do know one thing though. You get one life, bro. And it's like, fuck with society. Fuck society's views on what your life should be. You get one life. If you want to live it how you want to live it, live it how you want to live it. Even if it's the total, most dumbest, disgustingest, fucking repetitive, uh, self-abusing lifestyle ever known to man. If you want to do that, do it. But I don't encourage it, and I hope that nobody ever wants to choose that life for themselves. But you don't want to live like this. No. It's the drug that really got you stuck, right? No. The addiction. No. What is it? Choices you make? It's my mind. It's my mind. I get lost in my thoughts. And I dwell on the past, and I know I can't change it, but goddamn, I wish I could. And as life goes on, I make more memories, but it's like the only memories that I want to keep are the ones when I was sober, happy, healthy, and a fucking dad, I guess, you know? What advice would you give the youth out here, Scooby? Ripping and running the streets following in your same footsteps. <laughs> Around 16, 17, or 18. You know, Shit. Young. I mean, I said it. I said, it, it, like, to be honest, y'all gonna live y'all lives, bro. Live, live that shit up, bro. You gonna live your life, live it up. 
If you want to make wrong decisions, make wrong decisions. Every, every kid does it, bro. Everybody makes wrong decisions. Don't let nobody else tell you they haven't. Just learn ways to overcome those wrong decisions or learn ways to change those wrong decisions into positivity or learn good coping skills to cope with life, bro. Because it's like... Scooby. It's, yo. Do you think this is a government experiment? <laughs> oh man, I, hey, I'm a real conspiracy theorist, for real. Don't, don't, don't get that whole little situation started. Do I think this is? Yeah, what do um, you think this is? Kensington. Everybody no, using drugs out here. What do you think this is? You can't do this anywhere else. Open air drug market. I think this is a trap. Trap. If you ask me, I thought you just started hitting. It's like a concentration camp. Say that one more time. It's like a concentration camp. Concentration camp out here. They get you fucking hooked and trapped out here. It's lawless, and they don't never give a fuck what happens to you. As long as you're here, you're here. I mean. Uh, it's, it's, we, it, it, it get deep, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. I don't think it's a government experiment. No, I think it's a trap that we let ourselves be. I think it's a concentration camp. In a sense, yeah. What, like, what's it like? What's it like? Uh, sleeping out here? I don't sleep out here. Oh, you don't sleep out here. Fuck no. <laughs> no. Have luckily, you luckily, I, I, I am blessed with. Have you ever? Had to uh, sleep out here? Hell yeah. And at those times, I didn't sleep unless I nodded out. And it's like, I never willingly slept out here. Like, But it's like, I nodded out here. And it's like, I'd be out here at nights sometimes. But I don't be asleep. I'd be wide awake. Yeah. Party. Partying? Harder than you know. What's your drug of choice? Uh, hard and dope. Speedballs. Oh shit, yo, can my man's get in this jump? He was in a, he did a video uh too. Hop up in this jump. Um just one time. One time for the one time. Yeah, sure. It's my folks. His name is A B. We call his name A B. We call him A B. A he got a video too. Check it out. Oh yeah, what's up, A? Shit, genuine as a bitch. Alright. Yeah. We actually come getting... from the same lifestyle. Like the same story of why we got ended up here. And uh, I do believe this is a trap. We got trapped in this junk. As much as as much as everybody wants to leave, don't nobody leave this shit, nigga. This shit is this shit, once you get in this junk, bro, to leave is like easy to get in, like jail. Easy to get in, but goddamn, that shit is even, nearly impossible to get out. Life threatening. Like like like, all right, I done seen somebody have a contact stuck in her eye. She got mace and her eyesight is going to get, she's going to lose her eyesight in her left eye if she does not get the medical treatment she needs. And I heard her say, well, I just want to do one more bag before I go. And I offered her to go with her and supply all the drugs. And she did not want to go. So it's like. Did she go blind? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I ain't see that bitch in there. I ain't see that bitch again yet. Egg, she got Mason. She didn't want a ghost. To the Man, awesome. I didn't see, bro. There's people out here where their skin is literally getting eaten alive by a tranquilizer, and it's like they just keep going hard. Have you heard about the girl Amber? Is she okay? Who's Amber? Uh, Amber with the tattoos. She had the money money sign tattoos on her face. Yeah. Cool girl. Yeah, got it. Never heard of her. Everybody knows her. Everybody, this is the thing about me. No, put that cigarette in. You got another cigarette? This is the thing, right? I, I, don't, I don't really be trying to... The people who I know, I know. The people who I don't, I don't. I mean, if I don't know you, I probably look down for you, but I wish I knew Amber, and I probably do know Amber. I just got to see a picture of her. Throw it. Uh, I'm grabbing a cigarette. I ain't going to light it, though. I'd like to thank you for your time, Scooby. 
You've been a wonderful interviewee for me. Right. My name's ATM Fox. They call God, me Lil Scooter. God bless you, brother. Gang shit, little bitch. Look at